Hi, I'm Tazza Monopoly, cosmetic chemist and trainee here at the Institute of Personal Care Science. And today I'm going to show you how to put together a sustainable surfactant formula. Now I did do a video a few weeks ago on how to make a sustainable emulsion and I do cover some key critical things that you need to consider when making an emulsion, but they can also count towards a surfactant. Now, what is sustainability? Sustainability means taking into account the social, economic and environmental aspect of a product from start to finish in the process. So this is starting all the way from the source of your raw materials up until the finished product on the shelf itself. Sustainability doesn't just mean low carbon footprint. There are many aspects that contribute to sustainability. Now, what other sort of things do we need to consider when making a sustainable surfactant formula? First and foremost is your surfactants. Should we be using all natural or is it okay to use some synthetic? Using all natural surfactants would be ideal, but you may run into some problems with not getting the required clean, mildness or foam. So sometimes in some cases it is a good idea to consider using a naturally derived surfactant with maybe a small synthetic portion. A really good example here is Genogen CAB by Clarion. This is cocoa middle propyl betaine which is naturally derived but has a small synthetic portion. This provides really good foam and also is really good at adding mildness to your formula. Now, to work out the natural percentage of a material like Genogen CAB, which is naturally derived with a synthetic portion, you need to calculate the number of carbon atoms from the chemical formula itself, which you would then be able to obtain an RCI value, which is a renewable carbon index. So this is the number of carbon atoms coming from renewable sources relative to the total number of carbon atoms in an ingredient. And you also need to make sure this calculation is based on the active compound of a blended material. So in this case, it's cocoa middle propyl betaine, and this has an RCI value of 0.66. Now from there, you can work out the natural origin index, which is also known as the NOI. This is the molecular weight coming from renewable sources relative to total molecular weight of an ingredient. So in this case, cocoa middle propyl betaine has an NOI of 66%. Now, this would be classed as a derived natural ingredient according to the ISO standard because the rules are that it needs to have greater than 50% natural origin by molecular weight and by renewable carbon content or any other relevant methods. Using a surfactant that has a synthetic portion can yield a much better price point and performance. So that is something you may need to consider. When it comes to your other raw materials, consider using natural or vegetable origin ingredients, especially if their starting source is plant-based as it means it's totally 100% renewable. When it comes to your preservatives, consider natural or nature identical. The problem with nature identical is it may not be totally renewable, so that's something to also really think of when selecting your preservative. Use water alternatives or replacements. Belinda does a really good video outlining replacements or good alternatives. Use upcycled ingredients. Use biodegradable ingredients and or packaging. Use recyclable or refillable packaging. Use cold process where possible to reduce energy consumption, CO2 and water. Consider using multifunctional ingredients so it keeps your formula minimal. Use RSPO materials to reduce your impact on the orangutan species. And really consider how your raw materials are processed to reduce your carbon footprint. Now, let me show you how to put together a sustainable surfactant formula. Now, this is mostly natural, and I am gonna show you how to calculate the synthetic and natural portion of ingredients. Starting off is my phase A ingredients. I am gonna be using a non-ionic surfactant. I've chosen to use the Planter Care 2000 Up by BASF. I've used this because it is made from 100% renewable plant-derived feedstock, and it is also RSPO Mass Balance certified. Next, I've chosen to use an essential oil for a little bit of a scent. You can, of course, choose a naturally derived fragrance, but remember essential oils are from plant sources, so they're totally renewable. Because I'm using a plant oil, I have included an antioxidant and I have chosen the Dermafil Toco 70. This is a naturally derived form of tocopherol. Next is my anionic and amphoteric surfactants. I've chosen to go with the Hossapon SG as my anionic surfactant by Clarion. This is because it's naturally derived and it's also very mild. 
Next, I've chosen Genogen CAB as my amphoteric surfactant. This is also by Clarion. This is naturally derived with a synthetic portion, but it has really good foaming properties and it's really mild. Next is my water phase. Now I have chosen to use a water alternative here and I've gone with a hydrosol for a few reasons. They are very cost effective. There's many available and they're very easy to get. And they're also actually classed as an upcycled ingredient. They are a bypass product of making essential oils. Now, sulfate free products can be hard to thicken. So I am gonna add a gum in here. I've chosen to first go with some propane diol to slurry my gum. I've chosen the propane diol from Zamir. This has some environmental sustainability benefits such as significantly lowering greenhouse gas emissions and lowering energy consumption during its production. You can also add glycerin, but I would suggest using a vegetable derived glycerin as a lot of glycerin grades are actually animal derived. Next is my gum. I've chosen the Cosphoderm X Soft by Cosphotech. This is a natural gum and it's also EcoSir and Cosmos approved. Next is my preservative. I'm gonna pick the Cosphoderm Multi Meg by Cosphotech. This is naturally derived. It's also EcoSir and Cosmos approved and it's also RSPO and Mass Balance certified. Now, next is your actives or added extras slash extracts. Now, we do suggest using up to 5% of these materials. This can be all actives, or extracts or all added extras, or it could be a combination of both, which we do highly suggest using a combination of both to get best results. We do say up to 5% because we do find a lot of people tend to overuse these materials. Now for my added extra, I am gonna be using a scrub. So I'm gonna turn this into a sustainable foaming scrub product. I have chosen to go with the Immer Scrub 400P in the color Amber by DKSH as this is a natural and also eco-friendly scrub particle. Now, going back to my gum selection, another reason why I did choose this gum is because that it has really good particle suspension. So this is gonna help suspend my Immer Scrub throughout my product. I'm also gonna add a small input of an extract as well. I've chosen to go with a pineapple extract in glycerin because it's natural and it's also renewable. And lastly, don't forget to adjust your final pH. Now, if you do want a copy of this free formula, please contact us on the email below and we will send you a free copy of the full formula and method so you can get making this sustainable surfactant scrub formula. And there you go. That's how easy it is to put together a sustainable surfactant formula. If you enjoyed today's video, please give it a thumbs up, leave any questions in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe to receive notification on all our videos. Happy formulating.